So we're introducing today Becky Rodman, and she'll talk to us about the Guaymas Island and the San Juan Chamber Music Festivals that she handled, managed, produced for upwards of a couple 11, of decades. I believe it was 11 years. 11 years. Yeah. And we just figured out starting in 1980... 90, 92. Three. 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 93. There we oh, go. Wait, There's the first the poster. Yes. <laughs> I just love here's that poster the, with the, the fairy. Poster. Can, and, and the can music, you see this? Yeah, let okay. me zoom in on it a little bit more. Okay. So it's a wonderful graphic of the fairy with musical instruments writing the fairy. I just okay. love the graphic. By the way, this was done by our, a former resident of Guimas for many years, Richard Hine. Oh. You Mystic Hine. He was our architect and helped us with our house. And uh, oh. one day he just came up with uh, this poster and said, put them all in a boat. <laughs> <laughs> so, or on the ferry. Yeah, yeah. That's the fairy, all right. It sure is. Yeah. With, in, instead of birds flying around, you have musical notes flying around. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's clever. He's clever. Yeah, he was very clever. <clears throat> so, okay, so we're um, going through the collection of the Guaymas Island Historical Society, which was left behind in a state of moderate disarray when the founders passed without um, uh, anybody specific to keep it going. So there was a call by the library. Just so you know, the library took over the 5013C of the Historical Society, which actually technically no longer exists. It's now a part of the library. Mm -hmm. And the collection is also stewarded by the library now. It's here in the church, but it's the library's property, technically. Okay. And then they just put out a general notice to everybody interested in it to let, it, let them know if, if you were interested in, in taking a look and help come on down and so on. So um, I kind of jumped at the chance because, I don't know, it's always just kind of fascinating to do something like that where, you know, and we're looking through boxes of things, and we find lots of tapes, mostly oral histories. Mm. But at the end of the boxes of tapes <clears throat> are these music tapes. So we have apparently three music tapes, which seem to be from... <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, these look early on, because I recognize the name, although there should be... Ah, this is 95. <coughs> uh, this is not related to us. Aha, uh -huh. Mary O'Hearn. Oh. No. And Beethoven Variations, and this was from 95 also. So from a Saturday concert, we have on July 22nd and July 29th, we have two tapes. And I would just start out by saying that, uh, and I'll get to all of this uh, later, but to give you an example of what the, the, uh, re the menu was for these concerts, there was a Mozart quartet in F major with oboe and strings, uh, Leffler to Rhapsodies and a Dvorak uh, quartet for piano and strings, five players, in the first Saturday night. In the second Saturday night were variations of Mozart's uh, Magic Flute. There was a soloist playing the Bach Chaconne on violin, and there was a duo playing the Handel Halverson Pascalia on violin and viola, violin and cello, and then there was a Brahms quartet for piano and strings. So that gives you kind of an idea of what the programs were. They're very hefty, and um, so anyway, we and we had a nine-year-old at the time. Our son Matt was nine, mm -hmm. and um, I bet he loved it. yeah. So it ultimately, and by the way, his best friend. This is really off off panel, but it's 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 island lore. Yeah. His, his best friend became Kit Marcinko's son. Oh, Blake. Who just, Blake, Blake yeah. yes. And uh, he, Blake was seven, I think, or six, and Matt was nine. I think there's two or three years between him. And the two of them hooked up, and that was, you know, like my childhood. I just watched it all happen again in front of my eyes. And um, so, wow. anyway, um, Kit started working on the house, and we started meeting a lot more people on the island. Uh, Mike Murphy made a beautiful dining table for us. And um, so, anyway, he made this beautiful table, which we still have 33 years later. So all of this stuff started happening in 90. And so um, we decided that since there wasn't any cost to us here, that um, we would like to donate the pro proceeds to the community center. So we actually had Bob Easton be the ticket master in exchange for Bob doing all the tickets. We said, you keep the money. And so uh, I think it, I was told that it was half the cost of the community center for those years that we, it would cover half of the year, annual cost wow. 
of the theater at ten dollars a ticket. So, and if anybody couldn't hang, you know, yeah. come on in. <laughs> and uh, right. so it was just a wonderful experience. Plus, then I I didn't feel bad about saying, oh, we we I forgot to bake pies today. Does anybody want to bake some pies tonight, like Don? Mm -hmm. And Don and Janice were writing their, their cookbooks, so that was really a great thing because we would do menus from their cookbooks. Mm -hmm. And then we would invite them and other people in the island to come and have dinner with the artists, and that was really also a lot of fun because they got to meet the chefs. Yeah. So everybody had a good time, and then we, we got into where the artists started having families. You know, they kind of got married and they had families, and we had some of the same artists back. And so, particularly Maria Bachman, who is a dear friend of mine, who was putting all this together. We were deciding on repertoire and everything that they were going to, who was going to be invited back and who we were going to invite for a new person. And do we want to have an oboist this year? Would we rather have a clarinetist? Do we want a flutist? I mean, it just it kind of went on like that. And um, what the repertoire would be. And so, it all kind of worked out, but it included very many people on the island. Quite a, quite a few. And for instance, Joan Palmer was willing to give her house to John Klibanoff and his wife and I think two kids at the time. And um, then uh, there were other people who were in houses. There was one house who, uh, I won't go into details. There were a lot, a lot of people who were Offering very helpful. Space. And um, it, helpful in doing everything. I mean, we just, it was really fun, and it was kind of an island venture of the people who wanted to get involved. And uh, they found the artist to be very interesting. We had one guy who had won, and he was from South Korea, and he didn't own any real island clothes. So he came from New York, and he had a black jacket and black leather pants and, and these really unbelievable black boots. And we said, ah, we're going hiking. Who's got some shoes for him? <laughs> you know, who's got some pants for him? <laughs> you know, it's just. It showed up in a suit and tie. Oh, honestly, it was just—it was insane. That's some funny. of the things that were happening, and and some a lot of things that I found out later, you know, that yeah. were kind of kept from my <laughs> eyesight. But it was all okay. Nobody, nobody died. Nobody was hurt. Right. You know, but. <laughs> and um, so it was just a lot of fun, and I think the island, the really, the people who were involved in it, really looked forward to it. So we had a, a wonderful time. <laughs> we did a children's concert. Huh? And uh, my friend Bob Watt that year, he was a, a principal assistant principal French horn in the LA Phil. And a really good friend of mine came up and um, he did a children's concert where he, just, just for French horn, um, where he gave examples of, you know, different kinds of blowing through the, through the mouthpiece and he, he did some very funny, uh, it was, I wish I could remember everything. But um, one right. thing that he did is he got a garden hose. And he said, do you think that I can do happy birthday on this garden hose? And they all, mm, 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 no way. And uh, he did. It was all embouchure. Right, right. And uh, it was just incredible. <laughs> it was so much fun. And they, we did a, I think we did a children's concert every year, huh? as I remember. It should be in here. <laughs> well, until I discovered yeah. you, I did call that church in Mount Vernon oh. and left a message there and said, if, if they were, anybody there remembered anything oh. about the performance, could they please call me back? And I never heard like back. St. Paul's Church. St. Paul's. Mount, yeah. Yes, right. Well, that appears to be before the Lincoln Theater then. Okay. Because that's early on. And uh, I'm not really sure. Uh, Wings Island. Uh, we did a port teaser. Now, that was another fun thing that we did at noon the Friday before the weekend concerts. Huh. So the concerts were for us Friday night and Saturday night. But we went over there, and Ghirardelli, Ghirardelli was very generous. Um, she was the mayor, and I can't remember. Yeah, Lori Gear. Pardon me? Lori Gear. Lori Gear. <laughs> and she would comp the uh, artists for when they'd walk up from the pier. But they did a teaser down there, so they play a movement of this, uh -huh. that, and the other. Free to the public. Uh -huh. A lot of people would walk from their businesses down to the pier. It was packed. Wow. And um, they played inside that the boathouse with the water oh, coming right. in. Oh, right. You can hear the water song. Oh, you can hear the water. And Pier they, one. They just yeah. loved it. They <laughs> loved it. And uh, then we'd go walk up the street to Ghirardelli, and then they'd be like, um, uh, uh, you know, celebrities. Right. Walking up the street, and people would start following them. And what well, what just happened? Well, you'll have to come next year. <laughs> That's great. So it was a lot of fun. 
we just, we really had a good time with all of it. It was exhausting. Um, I have a dear friend who helped us out from when our son was growing up, and she came up every summer at Marcy. She's still here. She would be the person I'm picking up the ferry. Oh, okay. And um, she comes up every summer with me. <laughs> and uh, we worked so hard that we would just, uh, the week afterwards, oh, sure. we go, I'm not getting up till noon. Guess what? <laughs> <laughs> and I can only make it till 6. I'm off. <laughs> After that. But um, it was really a lot of fun. So the other fun question that arose is, some of them are called the uh, San Juan Islands, often oh, yeah. they're called the San Juan Islands Chamber Music Festival, <coughs> happening here on Guaymas, I yes. think, mostly. Mm -hmm. And then some of them, do, are some of them also called the Guaymas Islands? No, it no. should just be San Juan Islands. Always San Juan. Yeah. And the other so San Juan Islands? And did no, and we didn't want, we actually did travel to the other San Juan oh, Islands. Oh, I see. Some of the performances were on the other. Oh, yes. I see. Yes, okay. and I, we didn't put those on the posters here. Good. But we did advertise. They were at, they asked us to come and play, and this would be before the, the other, or maybe we didn't want to be in conflict with them, so yeah. we called it San Juan Islands. Chamber Islands. Music Festival. Plural. We Islands. told them that we didn't want to be in, in any kind of conflict with them, and we didn't want it. And if they thought that we were getting in the way, because there's the one on Lopez Island. Yes. It's called the Lopez. Lopez, I believe. Oh, okay. Yeah. But <laughs> I don't just think that was for, around then. For Guaymas to represent time. itself as being the San Juan Islands. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's not commonly funny. done, you know. Well, that's why We're we had the islands. The islands, plural, oh, sure. Yeah, because we didn't want it to be confused with San. Well, we knew about them, right, right. and we didn't want to have any any problems. It was it took over Seaway Hollow. I mean, you couldn't ignore it. Because they were, we were all down at the cabins for dinner, and cars were coming in and going, and so we had everybody park up at the house, which were up on a hill, and then we would have them come down. And we, a lot of things evolved, <laughs> I guess you'd have to say. But the music, mm -hmm. I haven't really gotten to how fantastic the music was. So this is the um, Bachman. Klibanoff Friedman Trio. Oh no, they have Felix Fahn. Oh my gosh. He had just won uh, something in the Tchaikovsky competition, I think. Wow. If I'm not mistaken. And Peter Bucknell. These people, when I, I would have to say that these people all created careers for themselves. Mm -hmm. And if they aren't playing in the Metropolitan Opera or have solo careers of their own, they all have absolutely reached the peak of That's whatever. Nice. They're well-known names in New York because they play in major symphony orchestras if they don't play in the Metropolitan Opera or the New York Phil. Wow. So many of them stayed because they went to Juilliard or Curtis or whatever. Yeah, and so, yeah, it was really amazing what we came up with. Yeah. I'm trying to think if I'd left out any really important part of this. <laughs> it was all too much fun. Yeah. Because it's not the new singers, it's um, uh, Wolfenden. Oh, Ian. Uh, Ian. Ian, yeah. Ian ha has a pond. I don't know if you've seen yeah. the pond. And, and oh, let's, let's go back. This has to be the, in the archive. Okay. Ferdy was... Yes, Ferdy Bussinger. Bussinger was so... Yost and Marianne were involved in this a little bit, too. Oh, that's the last time about it, too. Yeah. Um, Ferdy let us used to go to his uh, play, invited all the artists over to his place. He uh -huh. met us at the... He said, do you want to see a real farm? Well, the guy from New York didn't know that plants grow out of the ground. I'm not kidding you. I believe it. <laughs> yeah. And he came over in his boots and his black, you know, yeah. his leather, leather outfit. Right. And, um, but anyway, Ferdy, they were fascinated with Stonehenge. They were fascinated with everything that grew in his garden. And he let us, well, filch yeah. <laughs> from his garden. Yeah. And it was just fantastic because we would use all, everything that he gave us. And right. it was just, he'd just be pulling out just all these big, big things. Yeah. And um, so... Um, well, he's just a really was, friendly guy anyway. Yeah, so, yeah, and we'd go down... No, uh, is it No Name Road? No, it was um, Solstice Road. Solstice, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And go out there. And I, I just think, you know, for all of them, that was a real experience. But the other real experience was going to Ian's and, and using his pond with the... I can only get halfway up those steps. I had terrible vertigo. Oh. I thought I would actually try the ropes putting a swing at one point, and I was like crawling down on my knees, you know, trying to get down the steps. But anyway, there, we, we figured out real quickly who the brave, coordinated, sportsy guys were oh, yeah. from the very beginning because they would fly up that thing and fly out into his pond. It was so funny. I mean, it was just, it was the thing to do because it just said a lot about your personality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
And uh, then we talk about it a lot. And yeah. Oh, no, we had Weemus Money. Oh, yeah, Weemus Money. Yes. Weemus Money. And so somehow uh, we, we were playing, we, we decided not to pay for money, play for money, but we could do Weemus Money. Script. Script. So we found Green Paper and we, we used this thing and they were for favors. Uh, yeah. You know, sure. like you got an extra piece of pie. Yeah. Or something like that, or whatever whatever would come to somebody's mind. Uh, you know, uh, you're going to sleep here, and I'm going to sleep there. I don't like the upper bunk. And, uh, you know, and so it would always work its way out. Take three Guinness bucks for that. And we call them Guinness bucks. <laughs> <laughs> and they had my picture in the middle. Oh, you still have any of those? Oh, I do. Oh, they'd be great to see. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry I didn't bring it. I would be hilarious. Oh, yeah. They should be in the in the archive because yes. it's pretty funny. That's great. And it has names of people on the island, I think. Who like um, it could be? Um, who was the ticket master? Bob Easton. I think it was Treasure. Yeah. Was signed down at the bottom by Bob Easton. I think he actually had to sign them. Yeah. yeah. Great. Yeah, they were really clever. That's cool. But it, it developed a, a, a thing of its own, and it just continued all year. You know, everybody would be mm, back and forth as soon as we got computers and all that. Oh, as soon as you got computers. So we it's got. It's like it's in the early days. You wouldn't oh, even have no, had email. Oh no, phone right? calling all. Oh my God, yeah. it's just unbelievable. And <laughs> on landlines only, I probably. Right. But anyway, um, it, it developed a life of its own. It really did. Wow, Peggy, what a story. Yeah, it's wonderful. And, and people just, you know, if they heard about it from friends, and they said, are you doing that festival anymore? Can I come? Not even to play, just can I come? I heard so much about it. Yeah. It really put Gleamus on the map, which we didn't, Really want to do. Weemians are very <laughs> careful about that. And I said, you know, I, I'm not sure that we want to, you know, get into off island stuff because, you know, the fairy is, you know, the fairy's the fairy.